Right, so I've got my monolithic API, the API that's exposed to the front end, and I want to start breaking that down into microservices. And I've got this requirement to build this new loyalty point service. Seems like an optimal place to start the decomposition down to microservices. So I've built up my loyalty point service. It's a synchronous API that allows loyalty points to be added and loyalty points to be spent. But then I've got my monolithic API as well. Whenever an order is completed inside the monolithic API, I want that to then be sent to the loyalty point service for the loyalty points then to be added. But what is the simplest way to start breaking down this monolith, to start adding this additional new functionality around the edges of my existing system? Oh, hi there. Come in, come in, sit down, join me. Join me as I start to work through the simplest way to start to add new functionality around the edges of your monolithic application. Many of you will be working on systems. You'll be going into companies that are monolithic. They have this big existing legacy code base and you want to add some new functionality. You want to add some new stuff. So what is an optimal way to do that? Thankfully, event-driven architecture can help you here. If you can start publishing events from your existing code base, you can use that to then hook these new services into things that your monolithic system is publishing. And then you can slowly start to break down that monolith into these individual components. But let's Keep it nice and simple for the minute. Imagine you've got your main monolithic application that's got all of your different modules. You're following the modular monolith pattern. And then you've got a new loyalty point service that you need to integrate. What is the simplest way to start doing that? Remember, the use case you have is to start reacting to an order completed event. Inside the order management module, you have your order object. And whenever things happen inside your order object, they're collected up in this list of events. For example, when an order is completed, when the complete order method is called on this order object, all the properties get updated, history gets added, and then this order completed event gets created. I won't go into this domain events.raise method right now, but this allows module to module communication using events. You've then got this add integration event method. That is gonna add that new event, that order completed event, into a list of events that are held against that order class. Remember, the main thing you want to do here is to start publishing events from your monolith. So you're gonna start collecting up these events that you want to publish in memory inside your entity. From there, when you actually go to store that record in the database, if you move over now to the order repository, the order module inside plant-based pizza uses MongoDB as its data store. So when you actually go to persist that data to the database, you're also going to store the events you want to publish in an outbox. Now, I'm not gonna cover the outbox pattern in detail in this video. I'll cover that in a later video about why you should be using an outbox and what exactly an outbox is. Just know that whenever you make a change to an order entity, you're going to insert a new item in the outbox for each event that will be published. So if you follow this through now, when the complete order endpoint is hit on your API, that's then going to be updated in your database, and you're then going to store a record in the outbox table inside that same database. Now, typically you would wrap both of these writes inside a transaction. The version of MongoDB I'm using here doesn't support transactions, which is why that isn't there. But if I just add a quick comment for later to do, this should be wrapped in a transaction. So you do both them rights inside a transaction. Now you've got your state in your database updated and you've got an event stored in the outbox table in your database. You're then going to go off and actually publish that event. Again, I'm going to cover an outbox worker in more detail in the next video. So don't worry too much about exactly what's going on here. All you need to know is that you've got a background service running inside the monolith that's going to take the records from the outbox and actually publish them events onto some kind of event bus. The important thing to take away here is that we've not actually really changed any existing application code. You're not affecting existing functionality. You're writing to one additional table inside your database, and then you've got a completely separate process running your outbox. That process might run inside the main API process, but it's a background thread. It's a background process that's running. The actual event publisher itself uses Dapper. Now, if you're not familiar with Dapper or the distributed application programming runtime, Dapper provides a set of building blocks that really start to abstract away a lot of the common things you're gonna to need to do inside most modern applications. Things like service-to-service -service communication, things like pub sub, secrets management, state storage, workflows, actors, a whole bunch of different things. Now, one of the things that's also really valuable with Dapper is that if you're using Azure and Azure Container Apps, Azure Container Apps has support for Dapper built in. 
So if you're using Dapper in your application and you push that to Azure Container Apps, you've got all of that Dapper functionality that's built in and ready to go. So this is using Dapper. And as you'll see, this is a really useful abstraction. All you do with Dapper is inject an instance of the Dapper client, which comes from the Dapper NuGet package, and then hit this publish event async method. You just, you say where you want to publish to, what's the name of the pub sub component, what's the name of the topic you want to publish onto, in this case, order or order completed, and then the actual event payload itself. Remember, again, this is all new functionality. You're not touching any existing code aside from writing to that additional database table. This is all completely independent. So now you've updated your monolith to publish events. And as you start trying to migrate your monolith, you start trying to decompose your monolith, this can be a really valuable way to do it. As a first step, just start publishing events from your monolith. Whenever you update a piece of state in your monolithic application, just publish an event. Most cloud providers have really low cost event buses, Amazon Event Bridge on AWS, Service Bus or Event Grid on Azure. You've got really low cost ways to process events, serverless ways where you pay for exactly what you use. So starting publishing events. Once you've got them events being published, you've got the potential to be able to add these new services as external services around the edges. So now that you've got your monolith publishing events, you then need to update your loyalty point service to actually handle events. And again, Dapper can help you here. You can define subscriptions using Dapper just by adding attributes to HTTP methods. So you see, I've added this topic attribute. This is going to subscribe to the public pub sub component to the order completed topic. And you'll notice the order.ordercompleted.v1 name matches the same name of the event that we had in the monolithic application. So you're defining a subscriber here, a subscriber for the order completed event. And then you're gonna go off and actually run the add loyalty points command. You're gonna actually run your business logic from within this event handler. A really important thing to point out here from a design perspective is that you're separating your actual handler code from the actual business logic itself. All your event handler is doing is calling into some business logic. That means if you wanted to move this away from Dapper and move this to be a synchronous API call, you could do that. You could just call into that same business logic from your synchronous API endpoint. Once you've got them event handlers set up, you can then create endpoints on your actual API. So I'm creating a post endpoint here for slash order completed. It's then gonna call that event handlers.handle order completed event method. One of the really cool things about Dapper is that all subscription to events is just HTTP calls. You just expose HTTP endpoints, Dapper will call them endpoints from a sidecar that runs alongside your application. You can then configure Dapper to use cloud events. You can automatically map those subscriptions into Dapper. And now your loyalty point service is ready to go as well. You've started publishing events from your monolith by making very few actual changes to your actual application code. All you're doing is writing to a separate table. And then you've updated your actual new service to start subscribing to events. And that actually covers one of my favorite ways to start to break down a monolith. Remember, starting to publish events as soon as possible is a really sensible thing to do. Once you have the events being published, you've got the potential to be able to start hooking in these new services. So if you're thinking about starting to make changes to your monolithic system, just add some event publishing. In most cases, in my experience, it's a very low risk change to start adding some kind of outbox or start adding the event publishing. Once you've got them events being published, whether that's to a cloud service, to a Kafka topic, whatever that might be, you've then got the potential to be able to add subscribers. Once them event streams are in place, you can start to add subscribers. You can even start to pull modules out of the monolith to subscribe to events that are already being published. So starting publishing events from your monolith, start doing that as soon as possible. And that starts to give you a path to be able to break down the monolith. Now it's already well and good having that event publishing in place, but now we've got two different things going on inside that service. You've got your synchronous monolithic workload that's servicing them user requests from the front end. And then you've got this outbox worker that's kind of running in the background. And at the minute they're running as the same process, which means if there was an issue with your API, your worker wouldn't run. And equally, if there was an issue with your worker, that could potentially cause your API to slow down or even go offline. So how would you now think about running those two different workloads? How would you think about running web workloads and running background workloads? For that, I'll see you all in the next video.